Wonder if, wondering if you could uh, <laughs> give us an update in particular. I was walking today on the the Marina North section. Um, I remember there was some. There's been some discussion about basically extending the promenade, and certainly when the hotel was built next door, there was discussion about it there. But obviously now there's so this grant, parking there. Correct. So this grant is um, a part of. So when we applied, when I actually applied for this grant back in 2014, it was coincided with the zoning and the implementation projects to go along with the comprehensive plan. Um, so this project actually takes into consideration the the riverfront park, the finishing of riverfront park. The interaction at the Green Island Bridge, because we know that's not very pedestrian friendly or bicycle friendly, as we know as well. Uh, so we're trying to improve those connections. It carries the bike trail and the walk, the river walk, uh, from the marina, which we've already been funded for that section between which Dinosaur Barbecue, mm -hmm. the park, and the marina. Um, so that'll carry that up to the Collar City Bridge. And then it jumps to the Ingalls Avenue Boat Launch, the new park in North Central for the Ingalls Avenue Boat, boat Launch to complement that. And then it actually goes up to the 123rd Street Bridge to be the, make the connection between the boat launch at 123rd all the way up to the bridge. Sorry, when you say it jumps to the Ingalls Ave, so uh, does it, are we trying to connect, basically connect no, the downtown? No, so the original grant application was to take those five segmented areas and incorporate them into, into uh, designs for the waterfront. Gotcha. If you, remember, if you remember on the comprehensive plan, it talks about those five areas being our areas of concentrations we're trying to create those water lobbies access points for the neighborhoods to be able to access the river in more of a recreational format so with the partnership with redburn development and uh the new boat launch at 100 at ingles avenue a lot of that work is going to be accomplished by then so we'll just do some minor repairs over there um, where a lot of the funding <coughs> the focus will be at those other four, four locations so this will be designed to about how to correct so we have a separate this. grant for the one for Riverfront or for uh, Riverfront Park North, which encompasses the area around Dinosaur Barbecue to the marina. Great. And um, Monica, I noticed um, chasing came in at one hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars, and um, it looks like this architecture engineering. I haven't heard of them. Came in at forty-seven. Um, but uh, and then somebody came in really, really high. But um, the 150 CHA and West End Sampson, um, do you know why Chasen was picked over them? They're maybe about a 14,000 or I don't. Like I believe that. Steve put some justification in there uh, because it was uh, some pieces. I was not on the review committee for that. Um, so okay. you can certainly, but he did provide justification for why they chose the program Chasen. Okay. Yeah, it looks like um, the second lowest bid was Chasen. You guys right. want to stop parking in the promenade? <laughs> in the promenade? I'm kidding. I walked down the riverfront uh, bike trail today, and there was a, a, a chase and truck back behind their office, slightly outside the parking space into oh. the new bike spot. But okay. it's okay. There's also old snow <laughs> blocking the bike trail for that. So it'll open up in the spring. There's going to be some changes. <laughs> Further discussion? Yeah, I did. All right. All well, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution 25 passes, seven ayes, zero noes. Resolution 26. Resolution of the City Council approving home rule request regarding amendment of the New York State tax law and authorizing forwarding of same to New York State Legislature. Council Member Cummings at the request of the administration. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion, Council Member Peritor. Do I have a second? <coughs> Second, Council Member Gully, uh, I do have to abstain on this as I work for the state legislature with the accomplice. Further discussion? Council President? Yes, Council Member Cummings. I'll just say this is a, a pretty good opportunity to uh, find a new revenue source for the city of Troy. Um, you know, we often get uh, told that as the government people feel like we just keep coming back to the same taxpayers to keep funding the government over and over again um, and so definitely uh, hoping that we can work well with our delegation in the New York State Legislature uh, it sounds like we have some some positive support from them already uh, to move this forward and find a new revenue source to help diversify our funding streams and, and what this would do in particular is add a I believe 4% tax on uh, hotel rooms in the city uh, so that um, people that are visiting and then we can use some of that funding uh, to help 
uh, boost tourism, make sure that our city is more welcoming, uh, as well as uh, there's a few other. It can only go to a tourism. It's a dedicated fine. You can't use it for anything else. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion 26 passes. Six ayes, zero noes, one abstention. Thank you, Laura. And we already passed resolution 27. So uh, we'll open the final public forum. Would anyone like to speak? I wonder if we might want to directly address the two uh, questions from the beginning um, about uh, body cameras. Try to get a I think, uh, we and we did address that that the policies being worked on. Do you have uh, more of an update on that, Mayor? Not much. There's uh, two vendors who we will be entering into a pilot program with. The pilot program is expected to run about four to eight weeks, and at which time we'll be able to test out the cameras and uh, see what glitches we run into and see if we need to modify the policy um, and then choose a vendor and we can go from there. So we're getting close. Good the uh, the department, police department has been working hard on it. They've been working with the uh, uh, PBA on the policies for the past several months. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. And, and speaking of, uh, uh, speaking of police department working hard, um, Councilman Bissever and I did get, and, and obviously there's word, um, some folks here continue to be uh, concerned about how our city is treating the immigrant population and uh, what our policies there are. And I will say again, we, we got a good chance to sit down with the police chiefs and the mayor. Uh, I guess it was two weeks ago now, um, and they're working hard to develop make sure that uh, our policies are, are well in line with uh, a what's required by case law um, and by um, may I ask what you're yeah. talking about sure. or are you talking uh, about the yeah, sanctuary no, okay. city okay. yeah uh, so what, what are you talking so about and so the mayor and the chiefs actually met with uh, yeah we the continue council. to meet with the with with the chiefs yeah. and the mayor on this process um, of making sure that, because um, the core goal here, I think, is to make sure that folks who are here without proper documentation um, uh, feel safe to call the police if necessary. Um, and so a lot of that is in making sure that our public safety professionals are um, continue to not ask about people's immigration status and continue to not uh, escalate things up to ICE. Um, Do you have an instance where this has happened? No, that's what I'm saying. Uh, we're, so, why, okay. so, so the thing is, when you have a policy like this, it's important to make it clear to folks so that they can call the, the police if they need us, uh, so that we can build that trust. Um, and then, uh, let's see, the other, the other big question is the question of, of detainer requests which is uh, a complicated legal thing that maybe, I don't know if we want to get into in full detail here. Um, but uh, rest to say, the, the chiefs are studying the issue um, and we continue to work with them on it. So the chiefs right now are studying Sanctuary City or? They're what? studying the underlying policies. I think Sanctuary City. How are um, they studying policies? <laughs> So if you if you read the resolution, uh, it does have so it several. So um, it, it's a it's parallel. Okay. Um, if you read the resolution, it has several different uh, therefore be it resolved clauses, which have particular policies with regard to uh, how we treat our neighbors, and um, they are uh, working with us to make sure that uh, we can all get to the same page on what what's important and what, uh, and what will make their job uh, easier and what will make uh, people here feel safer and more comfortable. And you and Councilman are December driving that? Uh, yes. 
Um, would anyone else like to speak at the final public forum? Uh, you're welcome to talk about your neighborhood, talk about um, maybe the weather. Uh, <laughs> hi, Jason. Hi, uh, Jason from 61 Pinewoods in the East Side. Um, I wanted to uh, thank the council for allowing the five minutes uh, for individual public forum at the beginning and at the end. Because um, I know that other municipality is limited to two minutes. <coughs> I also wanted to say thank you for uh, having some leniency with folks who were speaking earlier that uh, stuff that wasn't on the agenda because that was not procedure. But um, so that was nice. <laughs> uh, I did want to ask about the body cams since it had been brought up. Uh, body cams, um, and I had mentioned something last month, uh, which sounded crazy, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought, like, why, um, why can't we get cameras sooner, and why can't the videos that they record uh, be public? Um, so I would like to press that, that we get those sooner than later. The recent occurrence, uh, occurrence over in Albany uh, stresses me out, and <laughs> Uh, I enjoy all of these privileges that like should make me not fear the police, and, and yet I do. Uh, so I can't e I can't even imagine what other people uh, must feel. Um, so uh, these things uh, bring to light this this I mentioned it last time this group mentality where uh, it brings about more of an us versus them. Uh, and it comes from both sides, and I, I don't want to get into like a chicken and egg debate, like where it started or where it comes from or um, any of that. But I, I do feel that a more unbiased eye is needed in these situations. Um, currently, the public everybody has a cell phone, um, uh, but we definitely need the police officers to have something so that uh, they can protect themselves and we can feel protected as well. Um, so I would like to reiterate my idea that uh, these videos be made public. Um, a lot of the times the public has to sue in order to get them made public or just to be able to get them used in the court. And that feels a lot like the police are treating themselves as if they're a military organization. We know how the military has their own judicial system and they do all this stuff in private away from the public unless they do something very, very civil. I mean, it, to a citizen, like then it, it can move over into um, our courts. But uh, it feels really weird that the police who are to serve and protect would treat themselves like that. I know that a lot of military go into the police, and so it makes sense that they would have that mentality. But I just like to lost this uh, serve and protect uh, idea. Um, I understand that policing calls for a strong arm a lot, um, but it uh, it seems like that it appears to a lot of citizens that police view them as the enemy rather uh, than that positiveness of uh, getting rid of criminals or whatever that strong arm is being for. Um, I, I realize I'm rambling a lot, but this is like some sort of one of these systemic issues that uh, we can address. Can we address it faster, <laughs> please, sooner, so that we don't become a news story like Albany and have these types of issues? Thank you, Jason. Thanks. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Messiah, uh, I'm a, a long time resident of Troy. I reside at 24 Grace Court. First, I'd like to congratulate the young lady uh, on uh, getting that seat. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Gary. And next, uh, I'd like to uh, piggyback all that gentleman said. Uh, it's basically proper policing for everybody and accountability for everybody because uh, it happened in Troy. A young man was murdered on that bridge in my eyes. 
but uh, that's going to be handled accordingly. Uh, my next thing is at the at the meeting that was held on uh, the 26th at the community center, the Oak, Oakwood Community Center. Uh, I spoke and uh, I voiced my opinion. In, in, in that meeting, I felt as though I was threatened by an officer, by, the, by a detective who brought up my past. He, he spoke about something, an encounter me and him had over 25 years ago. Uh, I felt, again, I was threatened and that was my very point. How could I ask someone what their name is when they are combative to, towards me? The point I was making at the meeting. And again, I believe that the officers should have something on to, to identify themselves, especially when they're coming in North Central, dealing with the community of North Central. They have no, no badges on to identify themselves. They have no name plate on to identify themselves. And their reasoning is that they're waiting on their new vests with embroidering to come in. And uh, he brought up the fact that uh, they couldn't put a, a stick pin through a bulletproof vest. In my eyes, it was nuts. Pretty much, it was crazy. A bulletproof vest, but you could you can't put a pin through through it to put your badge, your your name plate on, or your badge. And uh, I would like to know where do I go other than the Troy Police Station to get a complaint form? I was told City Hall. Does anybody know on the committee, on the council, where would I get a complaint form from other than the Troy Police Station? Corporation Council, um, I would say, has uh, complaint forms for various uh, issues. Well, can I have one, sir? Right now? <laughs> right now? How about you come back tomorrow during business hours? I'd like to, I'd like to go home. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem coming back tomorrow. I just would like to know where would I get one other than Detroit yep. Police Station because it seems to go nowhere. Yep. Go right through the doors. He's right next to the I'll give you my office. card. Here's my number. Okay. Call me tomorrow. Thank you, Messiah. I'll be down. Thank you. And, you know, to Messiah's um, credit, he did mention the identification um, on the police officers where and Monica did state that she would bring that to the mayor's office and talk to the chief about that. Thank you. So. Would anyone else like to speak? Monica. Monica Cousia, 14 Sheldon Avenue. Um, yes, yeah, so we did talk to the chiefs and he is asking them. Uh, Mr. Cooper, you remember they said something about the name, the color was wrong? Remember when we were at that meeting, they said yeah. the color of the badge was wrong? Yeah. So Chief Owens has said for them to utilize those that they do have so they can fast forward them. And when the new color comes in that matches, <coughs> then they'll switch them back out. So the chief is working on that for you. Okay, for the name Thank guys. you. Thank um, you. I just wanted to correct a few things and, that I heard tonight. Sorry, just, just, to be, just to be clear, does that mean they will, at what point will they be wearing names? Well, yes. a majority, so they cycle in and out. So as they heard at the meeting, um, a majority of the officers, any of the new officers have new vests and the new vests have all the names on them. It's the officers who, and for example, that night, Officer Castle, he is an officer who got fitted up about five years ago. So his, bat, his bulletproof vest doesn't have a name tag on it. So they're actually adding a name tag, so to speak. They came in the wrong color, so they didn't match. And apparently our police department has a match. Um, so they reordered them, but we asked them to go ahead and start putting those on. So they'll be rolling those out. I will let the community know that who is here from North Central, your police officer, Officer Bevavino, is in the back. I know that was another thing from the community meeting of the other night. So please stop and say hello and introduce yourself. Officer Bevavino. There he is. There he is. <laughs> and he has a name tag on. Uh, he's one of our newer ones. And I also just wanted to kind of clarify a couple things. We do have a paving program. It is not funded out of CDBG funding. The CDBG funding complements our paving program. Our paving program is funded through our CHIPS program, which is federal funding that we receive that trickles down. That is in addition to the CDBG paving and program and infrastructure improvements. I will also say if you have any questions in regards to the TRF, 
I'm the one who coordinates with the Troy Redevelopment Foundation. Chris Nolan is our point of contact there. I make the, uh, the plea for the parks and for all the other spending that we do. Uh, in addition to the $250,000 of that money goes into the general fund every year. It's included as a revenue stream in our budget line. That is already there. The additional 200,000 is is non-discretionary, so or discretionary, so we can choose where that goes. That's how we're paying for the park. That's how we're paying for the 10th Avenue, 10th Street Park, the old Six Park that we put application in for this year. So those funds traditionally go towards all youth programming, all neighborhood programming, and funds that we don't necessarily want to put on the backs of our taxpayers, like zoning ordinances and comprehensive plans. The zoning ordinance is covered completely without taxpayer funded dollars. That's a hundred thousand, it's grant money from New York State and Troy Redevelopment Foundation money that comes from our partners in the community. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on anything on the agenda? Hey Eric. Hello. Eric Wisher, 30 Fairfield Road. I'm president of Troy Uniform Firefighter Association. I'd like to start by welcoming our new council person aboard. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, I'd like to commend the council for passing the command officer's contract. <clears throat> it's nice to see that the employees get respected some. Uh, I'd like to speak on the rig that was put to pasture, so to speak. <coughs> Uh, two weeks ago, our guys were using that rig, driving the colony with it over the highway with a busted frame. It's unacceptable, you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to speak about turnout gear. Our turnout gear expired a year and two months ago. We still haven't received our turnout gear. I know there's been some glitches with the ordering, but on top of that, our guys that are at the academy wearing that turnout gear can't do live burns because it's expired. They've rearranged the academy to hopefully at the end those guys have their gear. But the funding's there, correct? Eric? The funding is there for the gear, but it hasn't come in yet. Um, another thing with the gear, most places have a second set of gear. Two weeks ago we went to a fire and water fleet, 10 o'clock in the morning. There's no way to clean that gear while you're working because we don't have a second set. You know what I mean? We would hope that that could be addressed. It's, it's a cancer causing issue. Right. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important thing. It's very expensive. The gear's three thousand dollars a set, times one hundred thirteen guys. It, it's uh, the cost of not getting cancer out to us is uh, you can't put a price tag on that. Absolutely. So those are the things we like to see addressed by the council with so many employee conditions. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've talked to a few of the council people about the conditions of our buildings. Uh, we just re-inspected them with the chiefs. We're going to give you guys a report on those inspections so you can see what kind of conditions and maybe we can secure some money to fix some of the things. Uh, some of the things would uh, are pretty disgusting. But. Hey, Eric, um, do you have regular meetings uh, with the mayor? And I know you're chief We haven't is. had any meetings with the mayor. We've been doing labor management with the chief. The chief is trying his hardest. We're trying to work together to, to try and address some of the issues, and he is addressing some of the issues um, you know for that aspect that's what we get back and forth there but when it comes from City Hall there's never any money for anything we need uh, obviously that's got to do we're going to arbitration on our contract so they don't want to give us anything because we're going to arbitration that's fine can you follow up um, with an email on the turnout gear yes. and the second um, uh, Second, Correct. second set of turnout second gear. Set. Yep. Um, we have 40 guys right now that have expired turnout gear that expired a year and two months ago. Me, me being one of them, but you know, there's 39 other guys. Five minutes. We wear that stuff every day at work. First time I've heard of it. Um, right. Listen, one last thing. Uh, sepsis. Are you guys doing anything new? I, I'm hearing some other departments are addressing because sepsis seems to be running a little rampant in the Yeah, fire. we haven't, uh, the department hasn't addressed anything with any changes into what we do on medical calls or anything. Do but, you uh, see that forthcoming it, it, it could be forthcoming. Okay. Uh, the last issue I'd like to address is yep. everybody's talking about body cams. Uh, nobody's negotiated with the UFA on body cams. We're going to be in those videos. We think we should have a say what goes on with those body cams. 
and I don't know how HIPAA applies to those body cams because they're going to be on EMS walls. Uh, so I think we should really be included in the negotiations for those body cams. Can you uh, follow up, put that in your follow up also? Yep. And can you do me a favor and copy the mayor and deputy mayor on that? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the council? Um, well, I want to close it um, on this was a very lively discussion. Uh, we all, um, just for like April 10th, yes, April 10th, next Wednesday, Lansing Bird Boys and Girls Club, we are holding a council informational meeting for folks who are still up this late watching the live stream. Um, these meetings are awesome. They're in an informal <coughs> manner. You have your department heads there, you have the mayor, and you have all of the council. It's at 6 p.m., Lansing Bird Boys and Girls Club, Wednesday, April 10th. Everyone is invited. It's not just Lansing Bird issues. They are citywide informational meetings. So we hope to see you there. Plenty of room. And um, I really want to congratulate uh, Deborah Garrett on the Council 2 District uh, seat and I look forward to working with you all of us look forward to working with you and uh, we can go over budgets all that good stuff and uh, I, I think you're going to be a great asset to the city to the council more importantly the district <coughs> so good night everyone have a safe trip home uh, do I have a motion to adjourn motion second, second. councilmember Garrett all in favor Aye. Aye. Oh. No. <laughs>